Today's guest on our Life and a Living podcast is Daniel Freeman, who is the founder and CEO of Genius Talent, a recruitment uh, business based in Raleigh in North Carolina. And of course, as you can imagine in the series of leading through COVID for the recruitment business, like many other businesses were thrown you know, completely up in the air when everything changed in March of this year. And to listen to Daniel talk about how he navigated his own organization, but also how he navigated his relationship with his clients is fan fantastic to hear because he did that really cleverly. And we talked about the challenges for him leading through COVID, the challenges for his team, the challenges for his clients, but also how, as I said, how he managed to to really, as he calls, uh, and neither was a great lovers of the word pivot, but he calls the word swivel, um, the offer to where to his clients, where many of the clients just saw them as a recruitment business, and he really had to you know bring to the fore other services that they could offer to their clients, and and to be a support to their client during this very very difficult time. So it's a really interesting story for a, a boutique business, how to lead and manage, and also manage your own business, but also manage your relationship with clients, which can be some very larger organizations, smaller organizations, but they all brought different challenges to during this time. So really encourage you to sit back and listen to Daniel, who does speak so well, so articulately about his business and about the challenges and how he faced them. So sit back and listen to Daniel Freeman, CEO and founder of Genius Talent. Daniel, thank you so much indeed for joining us today on A Life and a Living. It's a real honor to have you here with us. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to, to connect once again and, and chat about some very important topics. Absolutely. Well, COVID is here with us and going to be with us for a while. Good news about on the vaccines front, but we still got a long way to go to get, get to the other side of it. But maybe just before we kick into it, can just give a little bit of background about yourself and Genius Talent so that people have context for you. Absolutely. Yeah. I, so uh, my name is Daniel Freeman. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Genius Talent uh, here in Raleigh, North Carolina is where we're headquartered. Uh, we serve clients across the nation uh, with respect to hiring uh, and talent acquisition, uh, you know, specifically in uh, IT, professional services in the healthcare arena. All right. Okay. So, if we wind the clock back a number of months, so we were all kind of moving nicely along in January and February of this year, and we had the year planned out and we had our objectives and we knew where we were going and suddenly the world kind of changes for us. So for, for genius talent, you know, you had to move quickly, you had to adjust, you're servicing your clients. Yeah, how did you how did you make sure that you were, you, you did adjust and you did make that change as quickly as was necessary? Yeah, it was uh, definitely a, a trying time for sure earlier in the year as uh, as we kick things off. Uh, you know, specifically with our clients, we had a, a lot of clients whose their needs changed, right? And so for us to be able to, I know the the big term today is is pivot. Uh, you know, I think about it from a terms of swivel, right? We don't want to uh, completely pick up what we're doing and change, but uh, you know, perhaps turn it a little bit to the right or left uh, to adjust uh, as the atmosphere. Uh, gives to us. So thinking about our clients, we really had deeper conversations about uh, what their true needs were at that point in time. We had one particular client where uh, before everything kind of kicked off, they actually had uh, a significant need as it relates to contract staffing. Uh, and so, you know, it was a significant opportunity and due to COVID uh, that was put on hold. Uh, and so we started to have more deeper conversations. Well, what can we help you with today? How can we help you solve the problems that you're facing today? And so a lot of things that we uh, did was uh, we worked with a lot of folks who were being displaced, uh, providing uh, you know, resume writing, providing uh, interview, mock interview practice, uh, and things of that nature to really still be able to impact people, help organizations out, uh, and help people do this very difficult and trying time. Yeah. And did you find that you, because uh, I've had this conversation with a number of people, I mean, the series that I'm doing of leading through COVID, and it's been interesting because for Many of the leaders that I've spoken to in a similar position to yourself, they were saying, you know what, our, our objectives and our goals didn't really change. 
how we were going to get there may well have changed. Was that the same for you or did you have to completely change what you were looking to achieve in 2020? I concur wholeheartedly that, you know, I think the, the objective and the goals um, remain the same holistically. Uh, certainly that we had to uh, make some minor in-game or in-flight adjustments in terms of revenue and, and, and the numbers that we look to achieve. Uh, but our, our, our goals remain the same and how we prepared uh, from a daily blocking and tackling perspective um, in, in how we went about our business was much the same. Uh, so not much changed there. Uh, again, what we, what we did that did change was ensuring that we had our ear to the ground of what our clients' true needs were, right? Because uh, everyone was in an unprecedented uh, circumstance, unprecedented time. And so uh, those needs adapted, uh, those problems adapted. And so us as an organization, we had to adapt how we stepped out and helped them solve those problems. Okay. And how many people are in, are in Genius Talent? Uh, so we're a small boutique organization. We've got five people on our team right now and uh, you know, constantly serving our clients now, looking to continue to grow. Right, okay. And did you find that you had to make any adjustments in, in your own role in terms of how you managed your, how do you manage yourself, how you manage your people? Did you have to make significant adjustments to that? I wouldn't say any significant adjustments at all, uh, only because our organization is built on, um, you know, internal trust, uh, external trust. And so, you know, with that, you know, we have a, a significant amount of confidence in our people and what we do. And so, you know, for that, no, no amount of change uh, was going to significantly impact our business. You know, we are very empathetic about our, our people. We understand that at the end of the day, results matter. And so get your job done. <laughs> Um, and, and figure out how to solve the problems of the customer. Uh, and so for, for us, it's really just being, uh, having conversations about what's going on, being empathetic to people's individual situations, whether they were impacted in their families uh, or, or personal situations, and just providing whatever internal support we could, uh, you know, outside of the business. But at the end of the day, it's all about people. Uh, you know, we put people over profits and everything that we do. Obviously we're in business to make money, uh, but at the same token, uh, you know, without great people in your team, your organization's probably not going to do too well. Yeah. And, and you're you're very clear in the way you position the company. I mean, you, you do it very much. You're very upfront about the fact that your business is, is faith-based. Um, and how much of a role did that play in that time of uncertainty? It, it played a tremendous uh, role. You know, as I was brought up, um, uh, my faith is, uh, you know, I'm a Christian. And so with that, we try to, uh, or we are building our organization based off of biblical principles and how we engage, you know, our consultants and how we engage our clients and, and making sure we're doing so uh, with, uh, you know, those biblical principles in mind. You know, as you think about um, those biblical principles is, you know, is, is one of them is, you know, trust in the Lord and all you do and lean not to your own understanding, right? And so for that, you know, I just didn't try to grab the bull by the horns and um, try to decide that I had everything figured out in terms of how we get through this pandemic, how we swivel or pivot, uh, really became uh, just, just having good dialogue, conversation amongst our group, uh, being prayerful about it, and uh, just staying very positive. I'm a last half full person anyway. And so uh, that coupled with my faith uh, provided a good platform for us to be uh, successful and push on. Okay. And for you, I mean, what, what did you find was the biggest challenge for you during this time? Because that, you know, you're, it's, it's, it, you're the leader of the business, you're the owner of the business, you're the founder of the business, and suddenly kind of everything changes. So, I mean, what would you say was the biggest challenge for you as a leader, as a manager, and for you personally? Yeah, how much time you got, John? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it really, uh, there, there were significant challenges all, all the way throughout this pandemic, and, and there continues to be significant challenges. What, what I'll say as the, the most significant uh, today, and, and subject to change, right? You know, every day is a, it's a moving target. But, uh, you know, for us, it was really about uh, ensuring that we did not lose our current clients that we were engaged with that might not be hiring at this point or need our services in our traditional capacity. Uh, the biggest thing was uh, letting the clients know that we had other capabilities that we were able to serve them with. And so, uh, you know, getting that message across uh, and trying to, again, swivel a bit to 
let clients know, hey, we just we aren't just a hiring company. We can also provide consulting work. Uh, we can also do some of the resume writing I talked about. We can help with some of your displaced folks and providing mock interviewing to prepare them for their next opportunity. Um, and so those are some of the things that uh, were very challenging. A lot of our clients early on uh, only saw us as a staffing and recruiting company, and we're much more than that. And so having those conversations and being able to uh, get them to understand that uh, was, was difficult in our swivel. And for you personally, what would you say was the most challenging? <laughs> I am a people person, John, by, by nature. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, for me, quite frankly, the quarantine has been uh, the most challenging for me. I like to be out and about. I like to, uh, you know, meet people face to face, grab coffee, lunch, uh, dinners, uh, shaking hands. Uh, you, you know, I'm a hugger <laughs> uh, when yeah. I get to know you uh, well. And so for me, the, the, the most challenging part is just being that most everything is virtual, right? Um, and, uh, and so you have to be respectful of people's comfort level uh, given our current situation. Uh, and so for me being the gregarious kind of uh, 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 very people oriented person, uh, being uh, in my home office, uh, working and communicating with folks like you and I are today has been the biggest challenge for me. Yeah, I know. I, I Listen, I, I, I would absolutely empathize with that because while the technology is great and it's, you know, God, I mean, can you imagine if we didn't have it, if it, all of this happened at a time when we didn't have the technology? But nevertheless, like right. you, I'm very much a people person. And I think that, you know, you, you realize we really are wired to connect, but we're wired to connect in in in, in face to face and to have that physical contact as well. And I miss that. I miss that. I mean, even though sometimes I I give out about the traveling and flying and airports and security and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> But, you know, I actually really miss doing it and, and engaging with people. And um, and I look forward to getting back to that. One of the things I'm just interested, I, and I, I appreciate that you've got a, a, a very kind of, as you say, you've got a boutique business and a very compact number of people. There, but nevertheless, you've got to manage that team. And one of the things that's come up in a number of conversations with leaders is that, you know, because they were accustomed to to everybody being in the office around them that they could manage in the way that they got used to. And now certainly everybody was virtual and they found it difficult to get the balance between, you know, connecting with their, with their people and, but not being seen as micromanaging. Did you find that you had to be really conscious of how you were doing that? Not really. Um, again, you know, we, um, we operate where we, um, we give people trust, right? Uh, you know, I, I, we go through a very scrutinous interview process to bring people on, and we want to make sure that they're not only aligned from a hard skill perspective, but a soft skill perspective, and their values align with the organization. And so when we do that right, you know, the, the, the people that we hire are, are very well aligned to what we want to do. So from a micromanagement perspective, that's never been something that I've enjoyed personally being managed before. Uh, nor do I enjoy it as a leader with my folks, right? My, I think my job as a leader is to hire great people, give them the tools and resources necessary to be successful and get out of the way. Yeah. Um, and so for us, it was more about, uh, for me, it was more about how can I support you? Uh, what do you need from me? Do you need to meet for a coffee and talk through anything? Uh, do you need to have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, twice a week? Or do you need to just chat, you know, every couple of weeks. Uh, do we just need to have one team meeting a week? Do we need to talk every day? And so really was putting the ball in their court to just be supportive of, of what their desires were, what their wants and needs were. And for that, I think we were very successful. And if you look at the way you support the people, what would you say, say is bit were, were kind of the key things for you in terms of making sure they, they were able to work from home and that they were, their needs were being met? What would you say were the key things to really focus in on with them. Yeah, you know, I, I think that, you know, in, in light of the pandemic, uh, it was a big change and a challenge for everyone. And so as you think about that, uh, you know, working remotely, whether, unless you did it as your primary job prior to the pandemic, it was a big change for you, right? So you had to self-manage, you didn't have the other people in the office to, you, know, you weren't worried about people looking at your shoulder, am I completing myself on time, am I, surfing the internet or whatever the case may be. Uh, you know, and so for, for us, something that I thought about uh, very uh, candidly was making sure that performance did not slip. And so you know, having those conversations from a supportive perspective, our people need that as well. People need uh, not necessarily to be motivated because you gotta be intrinsically motivated to do what you do, but people need support and help them push them 
uh, to become the greatest version of themselves, right? And so I think as leaders, we've got to be able to recognize when and where to push, pull, uh, and impact people through conversation or actions uh, to be able to help extract that greatness out of them. Yeah. So when you look back over the time, and I appreciate we're not out of it yet, but if you look back over the last, whatever it was, eight, eight nine months, would you do anything differently? <laughs> Uh, you know, over the last eight, nine months, you know, as I think about it, I think the only thing that I would do differently at this point is be more of an early adopter uh, in, um, you know, getting my clients on the horn to let them know that we have other service offerings. Uh, you know, it's kind of wait and feel it out uh, type of thing where, you know, you didn't know if this was going to be a two month, three month, six month, 12 month, two year thing. And so originally it was more about okay, kind of a wait and see mentality and, and still service the folks who needed us for traditional services. Uh, I think if I had to go back and do it again, I'd swivel quicker um, and be able to support clients with other, other service offerings. Mm. And when you, again, looking back in it, what did you learn? Or did you learn anything about yourself? And did you learn anything about your team when you look back on the time? Yeah. It, myself, I, I'll specifically talk about myself. Uh, you know, I, I learned that uh, I am a mere mortal man. Um, and, uh, you know, through Christ, I could do all things. And so, you know, in those trying times where, you know, I really looked at, uh, you, know, you know, revenue had slipped, uh, opportunities had dried up a bit, uh, you know, that self-doubt comes into for your organization. It's like, hey, how am I going to pay my people? How am I going to create opportunities for my people? Uh, and really for me, it's just, I, I learned that my faith is strong. And I learned that, uh, you know, turning my eyes to Christ and letting him order my footsteps in terms of how I proceed forward uh, put me in a really good position to be able to serve my internal and external uh, teams well. Uh, for my people, I I've learned that they are very resilient. Uh, people in general are resilient, right? You look across the entire world and how folks are bouncing back and people are, you know, are locking arms and really trying to uh, push forward. You know, I think that's true here in Raleigh, North Carolina with my team, right? It's a microcosm of the world that people are resilient and people want to do the right things and people want to uh, see our uh, society get back to a norm as soon as possible, whatever that may look like. Yeah. And and if you look at the, 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 the industry that you're in and the business that you have in the recruitment business, do you think that um, what has happened, has that, will that have long lasting change? Will it has, has it changed the industry or is it changing the industry that you operate in or will it just go back to the way it was beforehand? You know, I think that if you look across the uh, you know, history period in terms of you know, pandemics or, uh, or, or challenges within the economy, if you, we go all the way back to 9-11 specifically in the US, um, you know, there was you know, immediate impacts there. If you go back to kind of 2000, eight, nine, 10, we're in great recession uh, and impacts there. Um, you know, I think again, this is one of those things where as a, uh, a world we'll have to deal with it. And, uh, you know, I think we'll come out even stronger. You know, from our business perspective, I don't see it affecting the industry in a negative perspective long-term. You know, I think quite the opposite in the interim, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as you look at the need for contract uh, support across the globe, it's, it's, it's uh, increased immensely. And it, especially in pharmaceuticals as they rush to, uh, you know, get us a, a vaccine. And so, you know, thank, thankful for those folks that are working around the clock to do that. Um, and so, you know, I see our, our uh, industry coming out strong. Uh, you know, I think, again, as you look at numbers over the third and fourth quarter, uh, there's been significant growth there. And I think that trend will continue for the years to come. Yeah. And if, you, if you're looking at what, what we've all experienced over the last period of time, what would you say are some of the positive impacts that you've seen? Yeah, you know, I think the positive impacts, um, you know, can be uh, found on every street across the globe, right? When you go into communities and you go into, um, you know, the different uh, housing uh, subdivisions, um, you see more families that have been out. Uh, taking walks together, bike rides mm. together. Uh, you've seen more uh, families uh, go on hikes and, and enjoy meals together, you know, myself included in all that. I've spent more time with my family over this last eight months. Uh, that's been such a blessing, obviously in the eye of a storm, but, uh, you know, we try to look for that silver lining. And to me, that's the greatest silver lining that we could have taken from this. Is it more 
uh, real time with family, intentional time with family, uh, where we can grow and develop and truly communicate with one another uh, and strengthen our relationships. Yeah. And when you look into, uh, <laughs> this is really a, a kind of an awkward, hard, hard question to ask, but in a sense, when you look into your crystal ball, Daniel, and you look at the, you know, the, the different beliefs about what the new way of working will be post COVID, how do you see that changing from what we have experienced, you know, before all of this, how do you think it will change going forward? Yeah, I think if you look at our, History uh, as a people, period. Uh, it's always about innovation. Uh, it's always about um, how can we do things smarter, faster, better. And so, with that, you know, I think the companies that adapt to the new way of working, which I think will be uh, with more uh, remote or telework opportunities, uh, with cross collaboration uh, between teams that are on different continents or what have you. I think that that's going to be the new norm. And I think organizations that are on the forefront of that, uh, I think that they will see significant upticks in their talent pool and folks wanting to work for those types of company and bring their talents uh, to those organizations. And I think there'll be some organizations that uh, might have some resistance to it, right? And my caution to those organizations would be don't become the Woolworth of our time. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, I think that that, that, that that is a danger. But I think that, to be fair, for most of the organizations that I've been talking to and I've been dealing with and there are clients of mine in different parts of the world, uh, I think everybody is kind of saying, listen, we're going to have a hybrid type of, 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 of what we currently have. And we just got to allow and manage for that because um, and, and within that, I think that that offers great opportunity for companies, for, for, for employees and, and, and of course, for, for recruitment firms like your own, I think it offers great opportunity because I think the, for some people, the, the geographical boundaries have, have come down even more so than they, that they would have been previously. Absolutely. Yeah, I concur wholeheartedly with that. I mean, we have firms that are hiring folks to work for them, uh, East Coast, West Coast, organization might be one or the other and a candidate might be on the other coast and and they're working remotely for them right and they might fly in you know once a quarter to, to organization yeah. for kind of an all hands meeting so i agree i think the hybrid method is here uh to stay i think you'll see more companies uh providing more flexibility that way and certainly from a remote capacity uh you know and, and we got to keep in mind that all people are different right there's a lot of people out there who loves to be in a silo or love to be in their own office working you know, five days a week, you know, uh, you know, 52 weeks a year, whatever the case may be. Uh, but I am a type of person where I'm a people person, right? So mm -hmm. while, I, while I do enjoy my remote time, I need to be in and around people collaborating. Uh, and I think that's where some of the best ideas uh, are, are hatched and, and some of the best uh, problems are solved. Yeah, that's where you can spark off people as well, isn't it? That, that, that it's really, really healthy. Well, Absolutely. you know, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's fascinating how, you know, leaders like you in business have, have, as you say, have kind of swiveled rather than pivoted. I like you. I don't really like the word pivot, uh, but uh, and 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 really continue the business to grow their business. Before we wrap up, um, Daniel, and so that and you can tell people how to get in touch with you. Two questions I ask everybody is one is a book that's had a significant impact upon you. What book it is and, and what impact it had. Yeah, one of the most impactful books for me uh, was a book actually uh, you know, co-written by David Stewart, uh, who's the founder and chairman of uh, Worldwide Technology. Uh, the book is called Doing Business by the Good Book. Uh, and, and what that book really entails is it talks about how uh, he sought to build his organization, Worldwide Technology, which is a multi-billion dollar, multi-ethnic, multinational organization uh, today. He sought to build that organization based off of 52 uh, biblical principles in the Bible. And so uh, that had profound impact on me being uh, a Christian and uh, starting my organization, being a faith-based organization. Uh, it inspired me to uh, want to build my organization off of very similar principles, right? Utilizing uh, the value system and the principles that were given in the Bible to build an organization uh, off of. And so that would, that would be a book that I'd recommend everyone pick up. Okay, fascinating. And second question, as a, as a, a father of young children, uh, do you have any daily rituals? Do you have space in your day for daily rituals? And what are they? Yeah, uh, so yeah, I have an eight and a five-year-old. And, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting how daily rituals have changed, especially in this remote environment. 
uh, you know, the things that are constant for me during the day uh, is at some point during the day with my, my children, I'll play Uno, Chess, and Skippo. Uh, those games are constants for us. Uh, there's not a day that goes by that one of my kids doesn't ask daddy to play. And so I'm happy to do it. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things that, uh, that we enjoy. One of the other things that's uh, been interesting, too, is, uh, you know, me and my, my sons, uh, we actually have a, uh, a workout challenge going on right now where, where every day at the end of the day, we go up and for about 20 minutes, do a, a workout in our bonus room. We turn the music all out and do a bunch of calisthenics and they enjoy it. They have fun. Uh, they're challenged. I'm challenged. Uh, and it's just a great time to really bond uh, from a father son relationship standpoint. Oh, I love that. That's fantastic. Well done. Daniel, people listening, we'll have everything in the show notes, but if they're listening, I want to get in touch with you. What's the best way for them to connect with you? Absolutely. Yeah. So you can go to our website, uh, www.geniustalentgroup.com. Uh, you can also visit us on LinkedIn, uh, Genius Talent. And, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, 919-295- 6120 is a great way to get in touch with us as well. Great. Daniel, thank you so much for giving your time. I really appreciate it. And it's been really interesting to hear, to listen to your story and how you have led Genius Talent through this challenging time. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. 